A very warm welcome to everybody from the Blakeney Klein District Royal British Legion branch up here on the North Norfolk coast. We're thrilled to welcome you all to a very special concert by John Courtney, winner of this year's Britain's Got Talent. He's generously given his time and we're very lucky to have him. We're sure you're going to thoroughly enjoy it. Before we start, a quick word about what we do up here. The one thing we benefit from in North Norfolk is wonderful resources. We have an enviable modern events hall, which was and will again be a very popular music venue, as well as being used for courses in business development that have supported ex-service personnel. Before lockdown, we were providing respite breaks. That's long weekends for services families using our seaside, marshes and countryside as places for quiet and for reflection so that families can regroup and rebuild. During this COVID year, we are particularly proud to have been part of a community fundraising team that's raised nearly £70,000 to buy a specially adapted small ferry boat that will take wheelchair users on trips into our beautiful harbour. That means people with disabilities can enjoy our two national nature reserves in exactly the same way as able-bodied people do. We will work closely with the Royal British Legion Retirement Home in Cromer, Halsey House, so that their residents can fully enjoy this coastline. Tonight's show is free, and thank you, John, for that. If you would like to make a donation to the work that we in Blakely do and the wider Legion causes, then you are able to do that on the RBL website. You'll find that's very easy to do, and hopefully a good number of you will do just that. So, on with the show, and enjoy. Hello, everybody. Wow, this is great. Hi, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tom, for that introduction. It's a pleasure to be here uh, in my studio and a very special studio this evening because my mum's with me. And it, we just worked out. Hang on, let me give you. Mum can say hi. Say hi, mum. Give us a hi, wave. Hi, everybody. There you go. Mum's here in the studio, which is very unusual. Um, which is part of our little bubble. So this is the first time she's been out of the house in months. So it's great to have her here. So um, yes, yeah, so from where I'm sat, it's just a show for my mum. But I know we've got lots of people out there. So I really hope you enjoy the show tonight. And of course, as Tom just said, in aid of the fantastic charity, the Royal British Legion, over 235,000 members, over 110,000 volunteers. And as Tom said, it is a free show. We'd love you to donate. And here's the teaser. I have written a brand new song, especially for this evening, especially for the occasion. And I've got to be honest, um, I, I'm quite proud of it. It's, I, I think it's a good song. It's very different to ev anything I've written before. It's quite a serious song. Um, but I'm, I, I literally finished writing it today. I've, I've been working on it for the, for, the last, for the last few days. Finished writing it today. So I will perform the new song at the end of the show tonight if you all make donations. That's the teaser. You, you've got to pay to hear the new song. Let's try and raise some money for this great charity. So um, let's start with the song that really started my, uh, my, my latest career uh, boost as a songwriter. It's the most remarkable thing. I've, al I've always written songs. I've always sort of written stuff for my own show, but you know, the parodies here and there and little, little jingles and things like that. But now since Britain's Got Talent, I, I seem to be getting all these requests to, to write big songs and so I'm, I'm writing a musical with somebody and I'm writing songs for companies and and it's very exciting um but it's a it's a complete career change really I was just a guy that made jokes and played the piano but now I write a lot of songs so the song that really started it for me uh, was this one at my audition back in January at the London Palladium the only reason that and this is true the only reason I went into Britain's Got Talent was because I had the chance to perform at the London Palladium. Uh, I live near Manchester and they were doing auditions at the Lowry Theatre, which is 20 minutes down the road from my house. And they said, obviously you want to audition at the Lowry. And I said, no, no, no. I said, if I'm going to do this, it's going to be at the Palladium. At least if, even if I get four red crosses, at least I can say that I've performed at the Palladium. So that's why I went down there. Now, unless you were actually there at the Palladium, you won't have heard the full version of this song uh, because it was edited for time and whatever on, on the actual broadcast. So tonight you get to hear the full version of the song and maybe you'll realise why some of it was edited. There were a couple of cheeky lines that maybe wouldn't have got past the broadcasting <laughs> standards. Um, and I've tweaked it slightly for this evening too. So um, again, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. 
and this is the audition song. There was a man who had a dream that one day he would be seen by everyone in the region and further afield for the British Legion. And in the time that one song took, David Williams would write another book. Alicia would smile at him. Amanda would be kind to him. Simon's teeth would be blinding him. But nothing now could ever spoil the dream he dreamed like Susan Boyle. is he never thought he'd ever get to be in front of millions of people doing his thing on TV. 30 years of playing in piano bars and pubs, dodging glasses when they're throwing, being thrown out of clubs. When he realizes he's older and 50 ain't so far, and he's having trouble making all the payments on his car. And his children ask, Daddy, when are you coming home? This game is not the same when you're just Daddy on the phone. So he sits at the piano and he tries to get prepared thinking he'll write it in third person so he doesn't feel as scared to sing about himself to a bunch of strangers in the dark but then Britain has got talent and he wants to make his mark Paul Potts won the first year and said it was insane the second year George Sampson won singing in the rain diversity won the third year and then the world would see a dancing dog he stole our hearts the winner was Pudsey Lost Voice Guys season 12 And last year Colin Thackeray So why not me? That's what he said His youngest boy one night in bed Dad, why not you? Go and show them what you do And even though you'll be a wreck At least you'll meet Anton Deck So this is one of the bits that they cut out Now bearing in mind this was in January This wasn't long after Ant had had a little issue with a car and, and driving into something, and he was off our screens for a little while, and I tried to sneak this verse past the, uh, past the producers and didn't get away with it. This is what you didn't hear. And that's when he tells his son he has to admit When he meets Ant and Deck, how does he know which is which? If Deck is the short one, then Ant must be The one who got replaced by Holly Willoughby <laughs> Then he thinks on stage, at this stage in his life with an expensive mortgage and a pensive wife. Who's watching? I am. His youngest son, Alfie, says, what's it all about? If he had any hair left, he'd pull it out. His teenage son said, uh, uh, uh. His dad taught him to play piano, but he didn't live to see his son performing for the British Legion virtually. If he didn't see it through, imagine how sad Look on the faces of both his lads Who always tell him You're the greatest showman dad And they saw me on BGT No more third person, just daddy That was me You can clap. Mum's clap. You can clap. Yeah, yay. I've actually, I, I, I've missed applause so much. <laughs> All these shows I've been doing, no applause. Now my mum's here. She wasn't, she was doing that. I couldn't even hear her. Clap out loud, mum. Don't be shy. Yeah, there you go. My mum's clapping for me. Uh, she's been clapping for me since I was five years old. Thanks, mum. So yeah, that was it. That's what started it all. Um, Ant and Deck ran out and gave me their golden buzzer. So, which was just absolutely nuts. And it all sort of took off from there. Um, of course, what we didn't know is what was going to be ahead of us. As I say, we filmed that in January, but it wasn't broadcast until April. So uh, I knew I was going to be straight through to the semifinals because of the Golden Buzzer. And we thought the semifinals would have been in May, like, like they normally would be. And then the finals would have been in June. So I had to start working on the song that I was going to perform in the semifinals. And what happened, as, as Emma and I and, and my boys, Nathan and Alfie, as we were leaving the Palladium, I fell down some steps. Uh, outside and nearly fell into the road but my wife caught me she caught my arm and stopped me falling into the road and she said don't die that would be a waste of the golden buzzer 
because she's very caring and, thought, and thoughtful like that. So we started giggling because that was quite funny. Uh, and then I had an idea for this song. I thought, you know, how I've been given this huge opportunity now, um, courtesy of Ant and Deck, to be given this this big exposure on, on British television. Uh, how how could I how could I make it go wrong? What, what how could I screw it up? And of course, you know, there were lots lots of things that could go wrong. The biggest thing that could go wrong is if I died. That would be the worst case scenario. Um, so on the train on the way home, I came up with this idea of a song called I Must Not Die. And it was about all the things that could go wrong before the semifinals. And I wrote it quite quickly. I wrote the basic song on the train on the way home. And in, in a few days, I'd sort of finished it and I'd, I'd finalized it. And I sent it to the producers and they really liked it. We had this big idea. We we're going to have dancing girls on stage, kicking their legs and singing. He didn't. It was going to be a lot of fun. Um, so I, I, I was quite happy that that was that was written. It was done. I had nothing to worry about until it was broadcast in April and then the semifinals. And now, as we all know, uh, March came along and scuppered everybody's plans and uh, COVID and all that jazz started. And all of a sudden, a corona emergency wasn't just when you didn't have any beers in the fridge. So I, um, I still wasn't worried. I mean, you know, we presumed it was still going to go ahead. Television is television. The show goes on. And then we realized how bad it was getting. Uh, obviously, people were, um, were, were, were suffering. Uh, and I imagine there must have been a production meeting at some point at Britain's Got Talent between the senior producers and the director. And somebody must have put their hand up and said, by the way, at the moment, John Courtney is still planning to come on national television for the semifinals during a national pandemic and sing a song called I Must Not Die, uh, which obviously would have been in horrible taste and, and couldn't happen. So the producers phoned me and politely and forcibly encouraged me to write a different song, which I was quite upset about because the song that I wrote was quite good. And I thought tonight, maybe you'd like to hear it. Uh, bearing in mind, this was written long before this horrible situation. Otherwise, uh, you could accuse me of, of being a, a, a very, very poor taste. Um, so this was the original idea that I was going to perform at the semi-finals of Britain's Got Talent. On the edge of my success, I don't want to make a mess of this opportunity that I have got. In these crazy circumstances, I don't want to take chances with my Britain's Got Talent semi-final spot. I can't see any reason why for this 14th season, I couldn't be a possible hot shot. The only problem I could see could ruin any chance for me is if I'm dead. And I've thought of this a lot. I must not die. That would be quite traumatic if I die. It could be problematic, so I'll try to remain emphatically alive. I must not die. My career could bounce back from an assortment of setbacks. I could maybe stub my finger or my toe. I could get a broken nail or there are many kind of ailments which would never make a difference to my show. I'm hoping that the pearly gates will want to make my visit late. Heaven has got talent, undoubtedly, but I want to live to be the big branch on my family tree so my grandchildren can see my spot on BGT. I must not die. That would be the final curtain if I die. Then I think I'm fairly certain that I'd cry. Though my eyes would not be working, they'd be dry. I must not die. Since I was on TV, I've had advice from family with the greatest of intentions, I am sure. Don't experiment with chemicals, socialize with cannibals, or catch a disease without a cure. It's not on my agenda to put hands inside a blender or drink water that is any way impure. So it must be safe to say that at the end of every day, there is a good chance that my life will still endure. And now the bridge. I'm gonna crew. This is the bit of song that's got a different tune. But bridges can be another fatality. Like a bridge over troubled water. London Bridge is falling down. The rope bridge groans in Indiana Jones. But Indy didn't die. Just like James Bond, you always can rely. The bullets always miss him when they fly, leaving him to wittily reply. No, Mish Money Penny, I don't expect to die. Old school, Sean Connery. I can't do Daniel Craig. My wife wants to. I'm not 
Dead like Shakespeare's Romeo Mufasa killed by Buffalo Don't wanna be a cameo Too early to say cheerio Just wanna play the piano And make it to another show That's why I did not die Thanks mum Yeah so that was uh, We had this great idea as well at the end of the song That we were gonna do um we were gonna we were gonna prank Ant and Deck, and we weren't gonna tell them. And it was my I thought this was this would have been a great idea because normally at the end of your song, uh, you go to the center of the stage and Ant and Deck walk over and they hand you a microphone, and that's what you use when you chat to them. Obviously, with all the COVID stuff, that stopped. Nobody could touch anybody else's microphone. But that was the original plan. So I'd got this gimmick that goes inside your hand and it shoots sparks out of your hand. And I was gonna hide that in my hand, having sung this song, I must not die. And when Ant and Deck handed me the microphone, I was gonna shoot these sparks out of it and just collapse on the floor as if I'd been electrocuted. But and, and just watch out, you know, all the producers would know the cameramen, and then watch out in Deck's face when suddenly you know, it looked like I'd been left cute. Anyway, obviously, none of that happened. Um, and instead, I was asked to uh, write a different song, which we'll go into in just a minute. I do have to tell you uh, as well, you have the opportunity to, to comment uh, this evening, and I can see some of them. I, I'm not guarantee I'm going to see everything. Um, but if you want to, uh, if you want to comment on the on uh, the face, if you're watching it on Facebook, if you're watching it on YouTube, the comments will come through uh, to my screen. Some of them will come through. And if there's any shout outs or anything that I can do, or, or anything, any questions, we can ask. Because this is live, obviously. You know, it's uh, it's not a pre-recorded show. Um, so yeah, if anybody wants to to write a question or a comment, nice comments, constructive criticism only. Um, if it's not constructive, it probably won't come through to my screen. Uh, and then we can have a chat, and I can answer some questions. So you're more than welcome to do that. I should just go back a little bit to my, my history uh, before Britain's Got Talent because it's, it's been quite widely reported, excuse me for just one second, in newspapers uh, and the such that I used to work on cruise ships. I had a had a, a very happy career for many years performing my one man show on some of these amazing vessels all over the world. And they really are incredible venues. I mean, you've got eight or nine piece live bands. You've got 2000 seat orchestras, uh, 2000 seat theatres, sorry. And you're getting paid to travel around the world and there's there's a buffet and you can eat as much as you like. And, yeah, it was a great career. My family got to travel with me a lot. My eldest son, uh, who's 15, he's traveled on like 57 cruise ships and he's 15 years old. When he started at primary school, he'd already been on like 20 ships and he thought that was normal. I remember him going to primary school and asking friends, how many ships have you been on? And he didn't know because he'd, he'd been brought up traveling the world, which was a great education. So I did spend a lot of time on cruises, which sort of leads me into this next song, which I want to share with you. Um, I don't want this to put anybody off cruising because it is a wonderful vacation. It's a wonderful holiday. And uh, um, what I'm going to tell you about now is the exception to the rule. But I, I was booked to perform on a, a ship that was traveling uh, from Southampton to the Caribbean. It was crossing the Atlantic and it was going to take uh, six days to cross the Atlantic. Then it was going to have two weeks traveling around the Caribbean and then six days back to Southampton. It was like a three week cruise, basically 30 day cruise. But all the British people could do a Caribbean cruise and they didn't have to fly anywhere. So it was it was packed with British people. And I was booked to perform on that first crossing. I was going to join in Southampton, cross to the Caribbean, and then I was going to fly home while the cruise carried on. And I'd done this before. Uh, I don't mind crossing the Atlantic. It's six days at sea. I quite like that. I get work done. I write lots of stuff when I'm on the ship in my in, in my palatial suite. <laughs> um, so I quite look forward to all these sea days. So, however, on, on this particular occasion, um, the weather was was awful. Now, it's the Atlantic. It's the North Atlantic. You start on the North Atlantic. The weather quite often can be a little bit choppy for one, maybe two days. On this particular occasion, a Force 11 storm followed us across the Atlantic for five days. The captain diverted the ship and the storm followed us. It was like a little cartoon cloud over the top of the ship and it, it followed us. And it was horrible. Um, they, they, had, they had to tie the, the, the piano down to the stage with a chain to stop the piano sliding off the stage. Um, so I was I performed my show on the second day and I don't really get seasick. It, it, it's a bit uncomfortable when the ship's moving and you can't walk straight. I did my show on the second day. And on, on the fourth day, the guy that was meant to do the show was seasick. So they asked me if I could step in and do a second show, which I wasn't really prepared for. But I, I thought you know, I'll step up and the show goes on. So I wrote a song especially for the occasion. And unlike the ship, the song went down well. <laughs> so I kept it in the show. But as I say, I don't want this to put you off. If you're thinking about doing a cruise, this is not normal. It's not normal to have horrible weather for a whole week. It doesn't normally happen. Um, however, it did on this occasion, which inspired me to write the seasick shanty. 
with big th- i must do a shout out to a fascinating ada who are a wonderful group uh, the, the three ladies who are uh, piano and co if you haven't seen fascinating ada they are wonderful and uh, the song that they did totally inspired this song some might say ripped off but i just say inspired by um so a big a big thank you to fascinating ada but this is the c6 shanty We booked a cruise on the internet, a trip for 30 days Food is all included, we really were amazed We were looking forward to cruising and to eating on the ship But they didn't tell us that we'd spend the first week being sick Seasick, seasick, the ship just bounced along I'm sick, she's sick, we want to go back home The brochure said that we had booked a Caribbean cruise It showed pictures of a beach and sun and lots of booze Maybe in the small print we probably should have read That by the time we got there we'd wish that we were dead The food that they promised us included in the fare Was laid out every evening for the passengers to share I know some people ate it and some went back for more Cause when they couldn't find a bag I saw it on the floor Seasick, seasick, my head's in the latrine I'm sick, she's sick, we're fed up being green I was looking forward to dancing in the evening with me wife But it's hard to dance while holding on and fearing for your life I tried to be romantic and give her a little kiss But as I moved towards her, the ship moved and I missed The gentleman I landed on looked a bit surprised He held me in his arms and his eyes are open wide I said thank you sir for catching me, not letting me hit the floor He gave me a wink then every night he was knocking on me door Seasick, seasick, the ship went up and down I'm sick, she's sick, back to Dublin town I know when we get there and we're lying on the sand Listening to the steel drums of a Caribbean band We'll soon forget and won't regret the advice from weathermen Until someone reminds us we've got to go back again It's not all bad when the sea moves you all around There can be a benefit, a silver lining that I found Me wife felt romantic So I suggested with a smirk We'll go to bed and lie there, let the ship do all the work We booked a cruise on the internet so we wouldn't have to fly We booked to do it again and hope the waves will still be high We'll cross the North Atlantic and if you're wondering why We got to try positions that we never thought we'd try Seasick, seasick, this holiday is great We've both been throwing up so much, we both lost so much weight. Seasick, seasick, now we're having fun. We're bouncing up and down in bed, the holiday has begun. Yay, mum's still here. Seasick shanty. Heard that a few times, haven't you? Now, we've had some comments. Let me let me do a shout out. How are we doing? Um, Oh, we got to say, uh, thank you, Imi. You like the you like the dark song. I guess that was the I must not die. Okay. Hi, Tom Harrison. Thank you very much. Very good. George Lunt, I love the grunt in your audition song when you mention your eldest son. It reminds me so much of someone I know. <laughs> yeah, every teenager you've ever met. Megan Pugsley, I love your songs, John Courtney. Can I have a shout out, please? There you are. I'm your biggest fan from Meggie Pugsley. Hi, Meggie Pugsley. Thank you very much. Uh, LS Crew, can't wait till you go to Butlins. I am doing Butlins next year. Yeah, I've got lots of dates at Butlins. And Sharon Matthews, you were on that cruise with you, <laughs> with me when we had when I first wrote that song. Oh, man, wasn't that fun? Yeah, that was crazy. Oh, we've got somebody on the same estate where I live. Hello from your newest neighbours at number 32. Hi, Richard Parker. Lovely to have you with us. And little Oliver. Little Oliver's watching. Hi, welcome to the welcome to the estate. Nice to have you with us. So, yeah, that was the C6 shanty. Um, so, yeah, the semifinals, um, this is what happened. Uh, they asked me to write another song. And I, I'd had this idea for, my, for a song to perform in the finals, which was going to be a tribute to my mum and dad. My mum and dad were both in, in show business, uh, but they never they never performed full time. They always had proper jobs like a lot of people in this business do. Um, you know, it's very difficult to earn a, a, a successful living out of this. Um, and lots of people you'll meet, you know, lots of actors, obviously, work in coffee shops and as waiters and stuff like that. It's very common. Um, but my mum and dad were great. And I'm not just saying that because she sat here. Mum was an amazing performer. She was uh, she played Annie and Annie Get Your Gun, um, which was a lovely story. But it was one of the first shows I remember going to see. I was very young. I was probably about six 
maybe six or seven years old when mum was playing Annie. If you don't know the story of Annie Getty Gun, um, Annie falls in love with Buffalo Bill and Buffalo Bill spurns her advances and breaks her heart, basically. Um, and my dad took me to see the show. So I was seven years old watching my mom. You can't get a man with a gun, all those songs, you know. Um, and at the end of the show, my dad took me, or the, the interval, it was the interval, and my dad took me backstage to see my mum. And I saw the guy playing Buffalo Bill. And apparently I walked up to him and kicked him in the shins because he was, he was, he broke my mum's heart. It didn't occur to me that I was holding my dad's hand and he was married to my mum. Ah, uh, the innocence of children. Uh, but I remember that it was one of those visits going to see my mum perform that I remember standing in the wings of a theatre and looking out into the audience and feeling this amazing buzz, this excitement. Um, and just wanting to go out there, wanting to be on stage performing. Whereas for most people, that would probably be a huge fear, walking out in front of people and, and talking or performing. But I knew I wanted to do this uh, from a very early age. And that was one of my earliest memories. Stand and I always, if, even now, when, when I'm in a theatre just before a show, I'll, I'll just take a moment to stand in the wings and have a peek at the theatre and try and remember that excitement that I felt when I was seven years old. I think that's really important. Um, so... Uh, yeah, that was um, that was watching my mum and dad when I was younger. They used to perform an old time musical. My dad used to be the compare in old time musical. If you remember the television program, the, the good old days, was it called? There was always the compare with the, the gavel and the tailcoat. Ladies and gentlemen, for your delicatation and entertainment pleasure, please welcome the and all that, all the long words. So my dad used to do that. And um, my mum was in the show. So I grew up watching showbiz is basically what I'm trying to say. Um, and I guess it was in my genes. I, I had the bug. So it's, it's their fault, really. Um, so I had this idea for writing this song about my mum and dad, which I was going to do uh, in the final song. And when we when obviously the lockdown happened and we realized I couldn't sing I Must Not Die, uh, they said, why don't you do your final song as the semi-final song? And I said, well, that's all well and good. But then what do I do for the finals? And they said, well, you'll have to write something else. Yeah, simple as that. But by then, obviously, I didn't know if I'd get to the finals. So the whole objective was to do your best as you could in the semi-finals in the hope that you would get through to the finals. Um, so I basically worked hard on, on the song uh, for my mum and dad called When I Was a Boy. Um, and if you did watch the program, uh, obviously they projected a lot of pictures onto the top of the piano. Uh, and there's a little story about this song, uh, which you won't know uh, unless you were there in the studio. Um, we rehearsed a lot. I mean, the, before we filmed the, the actual semi-final show, there's a whole day of rehearsing. And there was a lot of rehearsing for this song because they I, I'd sent them some old pictures of my mum and dad and me when I was a little boy and stuff like that. And they put it together into this sort of slideshow, which they were going to project onto the top of this white grand piano. And obviously, they've also got to rehearse all the camera angles for, uh, for you know, there's about 20 cameras in that studio. It's the most incredible thing. So there was a lot of rehearsals. And they were fine. The rehearsals were good. I was doing the song, the camera angles, the pictures. Everything was queued up to the song. It was all it was all going well. And then they did tell me, even though it wasn't live, there wasn't a live audience, they did say we are going to be recording it as live, which means if you screw up, you can't say, sorry, can we go again? You, you have to pretend it's a live show and there's an audience there. So there was going to be no editing um, because it was a competition. They're not allowed to edit. They're not allowed to cut or, or stuff like that. So. Um, Needless to say, when we got to the actual performance, I had what can only be described as a huge brain fart. Uh, and I forgot half the song, three verses. There's, I think there's only eight verses in the whole song. I forgot three verses and I just skipped. I skipped half the song and I jumped from one point to another point and missed this whole middle section, which for two days we'd been rehearsing with the entire crew of Britain's Got Talent. Every cameraman and producer and director knew exactly what pitch was coming up when I sung a word. And here we were, broad not broadcasting it, but recording it as live. And I just, I messed up. I mean, I, I literally forgot half the song. And when it happened, I, I realized, as I'm performing, I realized it, has, it had happened. I can only tell you that you couldn't have got a bus ticket between the cheeks of my bum. I was so tense. As soon as it happened, everything just clenched. And I just thought I've messed up this huge opportunity that I've had. I've, I've screwed up because I've, I've messed the song up. But of course, it was an original song. So nobody knew <laughs> I was the only one. And the producers and the directors, the judges didn't know. Nobody at home realized when they were watching it that, that I'd even gone wrong. But I had gone wrong. So when you saw me standing there at the end and uh, I think Ant and Deck said, you're Ant or Deck, one of them said, you look really shocked, John. And I think at the time I said, I am shocked for so many reasons because the judges said su such lovely things, how much they enjoyed the song. And for some reason, I was expecting them to say, yeah, we know you went wrong. But of course they didn't because they'd never heard the song before. So again, as a total exclusive for this British Legion gig, you get to hear the entire song as it was meant to be performed uh, on the semi-final of Britain's Got Talent. There I was again for some more BGT. I never dreamed the semis would include me. 
How could it be real? It must be a hoax. I'm just a piano man with a bunch of bad dad jokes. My hamster died. He fell asleep at the wheel. We had no live audience for the semi. Just you at home watching on TV. We were one judge down, so we got Ashley. Cycling for Simon is unhealthy. Electrically, apparently, as for me, I was outside Tesco two meters apart. Hand sanitizer, gloves, and a mask. So I was unrecognizable for people to ask. Were you on BGT? It's a pain in the Ask me why I do this Then they understood Inspiration from Chapman to Victoria Wood As a child I saw variety shows on the screen Wanting to be Billy Connolly, Elton or Queen My hair no longer grows Just out my ears and out my nose My forehead now has met my neck But no forehead jokes It upsets Anton Dare and they laugh. And deck go together like Robin and Batman, like Phil and Holly, like Simon and Fake Tan. But the greatest double act the world ever had was Carolyn and Ivan. That's my mum and dad. They were on stage long before I was born. As a child, I would sit there just shouting for more. They'd take me backstage, naked dancers I'd see. I decided show business was the business for me. I keep all the photos as I'm growing old. I keep all the photos as I'm growing old because memories like this are more precious than gold. I made an album so I can reminisce when I look. Then I go back to putting pictures of my dinner on Facebook, Insta, Snapchat. When I was 11, in my first spotlight, I was nervous and shaking and damning stage fright. But I knew this was it, this was my life for me. So I let out my breath and a little bit of wee. He taught me piano, I'd watch them both sing. I'd sing the laughter they gave and the applause that it brings. And though they dreamed of fame and to be on TV, they were always the biggest stars in the world to me. For 45 years they were barely apart But there wasn't a day when I didn't hear them laugh Like when dad dropped a glass of chocolate milk in the bath When we saw the mess he said, I only meant to fart True story Dad was still laughing till his final bow And the memories of him make us laugh even now But mum said never give up And she knows I love her but even she never dreamed I'd get a golden buzzer. Your family may be crazy, they may drive you around the bend. Your kids may drive you insane, it's a never ending spend. But my mum always told me, be proud of who you are. So now I teach my children, always reach for the stars. Yeah, I didn't do the big note. We've got neighbors. <laughs> I can't do the big note. <laughs> they might not be watching. They might be trying to get their little boy to bed. Yeah, so that was... um. Right, we better do some more shout outs. There's been lots of messages coming through. So, yes, uh, the, the donations, please, folks. Uh, obviously, this is a free show, but we are trying to raise some money for the Royal British Legion. Uh, if you're enjoying yourselves, just uh, I know a lot of people are struggling at the minute, whatever you can afford, um, make a little donation to the Royal British Legion. They do such a great job supporting uh, serving uh, personnel and ex serving personnel in all our armed forces. Um, and it's just a great charity. So, please. Um, if you can make a donation, please do. Uh, Andrew Davis. Hi, John. This is the best thing we've watched all Christmas. Oh, that's lovely. Thanks, Andrew. My children, Harry and Caitlin, are great fans and loving the show. Hi, Harry and Caitlin. Thanks for watching. That's cool. Uh, was it nervous being from Megan Pugsy? Was it nervous being on stage? What was it like when Ant and Deck pressed the golden buzzer? I don't really get nervous on stage. I love what I do. I'm very passionate about what I do. Um, and I think the live audience just gives you that gives you that buzz, gives you that energy, which is what we were, we were really missing at the semifinals and, and the finals. And indeed, right now, <laughs> um, as much as I love my mom, it's not doesn't substitute an, an audience of a thousand people. Um, but uh, no, I still don't really get nervous. I suppose because it was Britain's Got Talent, I was 
more nervous than usual because it was such a big deal, you know. Uh, but get, yeah, getting the gold buzzer was amazing. I just so didn't expect it. It was incredible. Um, Stuart Davis, you've made both myself and wife in tears. Oh, dear. <laughs> Sorry, Stuart. Love your lovely music. Thank you very much. Suzanne Nixon, fantastic songs, brilliant writing. Thank you. Can you release an album, please? Well, hopefully next year. Yeah, um, we're going to see. We have to see what happens with my contract with Britain's Got Talent because I do have a contract with them. Uh, but hopefully there will be an album. So, yeah, watch this space. Stuart Davis, your wife is Sue. Hi, Sue. Uh, Edward Smith. Hi, John. You're doing really well. Thank you very much, Edward. Can I have a shout out? My mum and dad are watching. Edward Smith's mum and dad. Hi, Edward Smith's mum and dad. And Simon Jenkins, please say hi to Simon and Julia Jenkins. Loving the show. Hi, Simon and Julia Jenkins. Great. Thanks for joining us. So the prize of winning Britain's Got Talent, apart from the money, which don't get me wrong, was it, I've got a dog under my feet. Go away. You're on my pedals. <laughs> it's my mum's dog <laughs> getting in the way of my pedals. Um, so, yeah, of course, yeah, the, the, the prize money was amazing. I mean, again, it's been widely reported just how close to um, the debtor's door we really were. Uh, you know, I've been self-employed my whole career and we all put money aside for a rainy day, but not a rainy year. And it was running out. So that was a real lifesaver. Um, but of course, the, the the big prize is this opportunity of performing at, at the Royal Variety Show, which was huge for me. I mean, it's a show that, as I say, with mum and dad being in the business, we grew up watching that show. It was one of the shows that we all sat down together and used to watch from as young as I can remember. Uh, never thinking that I'd actually be a part of it. And to go there, the rehearsal day was just amazing. I mean, there was, um, if you didn't see it, uh, Gary Barlow was on the bill, Michael Ball, um, Sheridan Smith, who I've always loved, just amazing. Um, and uh, Colonel Tom, of course, was was there virtually on the screen singing the duet with Michael Ball. Well, Colonel Tom was talking and Michael Ball was singing. Um, and it was incredible. Uh, Mel C from, from uh, Spice Girls was there. Steps were there. Um, and it was amazing because uh, I, I, they, I, they made me feel so welcome. And it was just incredible, incredible to, to be part of that show. Uh, you can't see, but just behind the camera on my on my studio door is my, my dressing room sticker. Uh, the Royal Variety Performance, Mr. John Courtney. That's pride of place on my studio door um and yeah i was very proud to be a part of that show and of course i had to write a song for it because that's what i do now i write a lot of songs <laughs> um and if you didn't see it um a, a brief bit of background every year for the last uh 13 years i've written emma my wife a song at christmas and uh i, I make a little music video to go with it i apologize now to all the men who are being prodded by their partners saying why don't you do that um to be fair it's the only way i can make up for all the stupid things i do during the rest of the year it's not my fault. I don't know how to load a dishwasher properly. I didn't even know we had a dishwasher. Anyway, uh, so I write this Christmas song and it started 13 years ago. And I wrote, I think the first one I wrote was called Your Christmas Song. And it was a very sort of romantic piano ballad all about the year that we'd had. And then, and then I gave it to Emma that year and she said, oh, this is amazing. Is this going to be a tradition now every year? And I said, well, it wasn't, but apparently now it is. <laughs> so every year I had to come up with these ideas to write these songs. And I, I won't lie, some years it got a bit weird. Uh, one year I dressed up as Britney Spears in a schoolgirl outfit and sung a parody of Oops, I Did It Again. Um, I did uh, stop motion videos with, with Lego and stuff. I don't know what your dog's after down here, but she's like, you bugger off there. Um, <laughs> being heckled by a dog. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so I had the idea this year, obviously, was just absolutely crazy with BGT and the Royal Variety and all that jazz. So I didn't have time to write her a Christmas song this year, and it would have been the first year I hadn't done it. So I told her, and she understood. What she didn't understand is that I was lying. I did write her the song, and it's the song that I performed on the Royal Variety show. Now, again, you get another exclusive on this evening's performance because um, – they had, they had to cut. Uh, the, Jason Manfred was the host. Lovely, lovely guy. I think he did a great job because there was no audience. We just had a TV monitor on all the seats. So you could see people on the TV monitors, which was very weird. Um, so uh, Jason Manfred was the host. And uh, uh, we all got cut. Uh, so the whole show, we recorded it about two hours. And it was 38 minutes over what the allotted time slot was on, on ITV for the show. So everybody had little bits of stuff cut. And they cut the whole of my opening song which i was a bit upset about because it was the bit that i wrote specifically as my little tribute to the royal variety and the history of the royal variety so tonight you get to hear it okay with the right notes <laughs> there have been so many famous pianists on this show all superstar celebrities all people that you know jerry lee's great balls of fire burned here long ago from the flamboyance of Liberace to the songs of Manolo. Not forgetting dear Les Dawson, who nearly killed the piano. And
And now you're sat there wondering eagerly Who's following in the footsteps of those legends? Well, it's me. And that's what they cut. And then it started. This is the song I wrote for Emma. Like Laurel and Hardy, Barker and Corbett, Eric and Ernie, Bernie and Schnorbitz, Cannon and Ball, Bombastic and Shaggy. I'll be your Kermit if you'll be Miss Piggy. If I'm a Danny from Greece, I may not be as cool, but you weren't as innocent as Sandy at school. Like oceans and cruise ships, canals and barges, you're my budget airline, I'm your hidden charges. We'll have cosmos at Christmas, espresso martinis, survive in the morning on Prosecco Bellini. We'll toast our loved ones and we'll look around us at the smiles on our boys and the joys that are Christmas. We go together like Del Boy and Rodney, like Stephen Fry and Clever, like Barney's at Easter, like chocolate whenever. I love you as much as you love your TV, celebrities in jungles and husbands on BGT. More than Boris loves power, more than Psycho loves a shower, more than honeybees love flowers, or Blackpool loves towers, more than Sinatra and Swing, Tantric and Sting, the crown jewels and bling. So I'm gonna sing, we'll have Cosmos at Christmas and gingerbread coffees. You'll leave quality street rappers in the tin with the toffees. We'll toast our loved ones and we'll look around us at the smiles on our boys and the joys that are Christmas. And even though everything one day comes to an end, like the last page of a good book or the last series of friends, so our kids will grow older and leave their father and mother, but we'll survive that chapter too, cause we'll have each other. And we'll have Cosmos at Christmas And Boxing Day headaches Chocolates and mince pies And rich booze filled fruitcakes We'll toast our loved ones And we'll look around us At the smiles on our boys And the joys that are Christmas There's more to think of It's not all about us I couldn't do the whole thing because at that point at the Royal Variety Show, four drummers from my old school, the Royal Hospital School, came on stage and did a whole drum display. We can't fit them in the studio and they're not part of my bubble, so they're not here. But that's what we did at the Royal Variety and uh, it was just incredible. And then to do the big finale at the end, the traditional finale, I thought being, you know, being the BGT winner, I'd be at the back of the stage. You just see my bald head bouncing up and down. Um, but there, you know, the curtains opened and I stepped forward and I was in between Michael Ball and Gary Barlow. It was the most amazing thing. In the rehearsal, Michael Ball turned around and saw me before I saw him. And he said, John Courtney, I love you. It was the most amazing moment. And then I'm on his radio show next year. I'm going to be on Michael's radio show on the 10th of January. Um, if you're listening, I'm going to be on Michael Ball's uh, Radio 2 uh, show. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, that was the Royal Variety Show. Uh, I'm going to do one more Christmas song uh, because I've still got my Christmas shirt and I've still got my Christmas hat. And it is theoretically still Christmas. Um, I read something really funny today, a, a, a new word, a mer merineum. It's the, it's the gap between Christmas and New Year. <laughs> Not the perineum, the, the merineum. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. It was on Twitter, I think. It was very good. Um, so yes, we're, we're in the middle of the merineum. Um, <laughs> When you're not too, it's sort of limbo, isn't it? You know, Christmas has happened and then just waiting for New Year, which of course this year is going to be a very strange affair. Um, but I did get to perform on Christmas Day on the uh, Britain's Got Talent Christmas show. Oh, well, let me just do a couple more uh, shout outs here. Uh, I don't want to miss anything. Uh, so, da, 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 Claire Reynolds, that was incredible. Thank you. Love Bessie and Arthur and Seth in Staley Bridge just down the road. Hi. So, oh, how do you I pronounce your name? Kier, is it Kieran? Kieran Kelly? You love the shirt. Thank you so much. And you like the songs. I didn't think I'd get the gold, was I? Uh, oh, we got a shout out. John, can you please give a big shout out to my partner, Sarah Miles, please? It's been a, such a bad year for us. But if you can give a massive shout out, it'd be amazing. Of course I can. Joshua Seaborn. A shout out for Sarah Miles. I hope you guys are doing okay. And Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, so, yeah, the, the Britain's Got Talent Christmas show. So uh, this was a very weird 
thing uh i i again i had to come up with another song and the way they told me it was amazing because um they'd sent me an email a week before the finals and it said um just a heads up uh, if you win uh, we'd love you to be part of the Britain's Got Talent Christmas show, which we're planning to do on Christmas Day. Is that OK? And I said, of course, I'd love to be a part of that if I win. This was like a week before the finals. And I, you know, a few of the other finalists got got letters as well um, and didn't think anything of it. So then on the night of when I won, um, I'm backstage. I'm being whisked out because as soon as you win and the cameras are off, you have to go for interviews and television and, and photos and all this stuff. And you're just dragged from pillar to post. So they were taking me through this backstage area. And the producer that was with me turned around and said, are you still okay for the Christmas show? This was on the Saturday when we, we filmed it live. Are you still okay for the Christmas show? We're filming it on Tuesday. Obviously, it wasn't live on Christmas Day. So I said, yes, of course I am. Very excited. She said, and you're okay to do a song for it? And I said, yeah, I presume I'll just do one of the songs I've already done. They said, no, we need a new song. This was on the Saturday, and it was recording on the Tuesday. <laughs> I, said, I said, you want me to write a song by Tuesday to perform at the Britain's Got Talent Christmas show? They said, yeah, is that okay? I said, well, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, and then as it turned out, it got postponed um, because there was a COVID outbreak and it all went horribly wrong. Uh, so I had a bit longer to write the song, but I did write it in two days. Um, and I had this idea of writing a song, uh, reading a letter that my son Alfie had written. We'd, we'd pretend that he'd written a letter and that, that would also get Alfie in the show. So we all got to travel down to London. Emma came with Nathan and Alfie. And it was great because obviously all the judges were there, Ant and Deck, and it was the same crew, all the cameramen and the producers, the stage manager. It was all the same people that had done Britain's Got Talent, and we'd all become quite friendly. So that was a great experience. Um, uh, but it was a lot of hanging around. Obviously, it was still very socially distant. So we were based in a hotel, and they brought us over to film our bits as and when they were ready. But it meant there was a lot of hanging around, and I was last on. So we didn't film my bit until 11 o'clock at night. And Alfie was so tired. Luckily, all he had to do was pretend to be asleep in a bed under a duvet. So he nailed that. Um, I was exhausted uh, and my voice had gone and I was feeling a bit stressed. Um, there was stuff going on at home. There, there was a lot going on in my head at the time. I'm not making excuses, um, but it was it was hard work. We, we, we had to film it a few times. I went wrong a couple of times and I was really stressed. You know, I wanted to do my best. There was a lot of pressure being the winner of Britain's Got Talent and all these people had come back from previous years. And got to meet a lot of them, of course. It was it was great for us all to hang out, um, socially distanced as we did. Um, so, yeah, there was a lot of takes. And I didn't know how they were going to edit it, um, especially at the end. They actually showed the bit where I said, oh, I've got a mouthful of snow. It was a lot worse than that. I took a big breath in to sing the end of this song. And all that fake snow, it's really fine tissue paper. I got a mouthful of, of tissue paper and actually choked. I mean, I was coughing and spluttering and, and scraping stuff out of my mouth. And it was the most disgusting thing. Luckily, they cut all of that out. And all you heard was me going, I've got a mouthful of snow, which was quite funny. So I was a bit nervous watching it on Christmas Day. We, we sat in our front room and I was, I was watching it through my fingers, hoping that they'd edited it to make it look better than I felt it had been because I was so stressed. Um, anyway. This was the song I wrote. This will probably be the last time I sing this till next year. Yeah, maybe try and release it as a Christmas single next year. It was too late this year. So, yeah, I, I picked the letter up from beside Alfie's bed and I put it on the piano. Just put it here like that. And we sung. Dear Santa and your elves and the reindeer that pull your sleigh. Lots of people have been poorly, so I hope that you're okay. I've sanitized the chimney. Rudolph's carrot has been steamed. Your glass of milk is pasteurized, so you know that it's clean. This year has been a weird one for so many of my friends. I've heard people in my family say they wish that it would end. But every year I make a wish before you visit me. I'd rather see some snow outside than gifts under the tree. But what we all thought was normal seems so long ago. So I wanted to write and say it's all right if there isn't any snow. But there are lots of things at Christmas every year I want to see, like the sound of music or Mary Poppins repeated on TV. We'll always want Michael Bublé rocking round a Christmas tree, and all we want for Christmas is more Mariah Carey. What I don't need to see is Uncle Bob on the sofa as he snores Or Mum have one more sherry, Auntie totting as she pours Dad's expression when he's given another pair of socks Or my sister slur this time next year <gasps> I promise to detox But Christmas isn't quantified by the presents that we get or buy 
And it isn't really classified by how much John Lewis makes us cry. And if you ever had any doubts, it's definitely not in Brussels sprouts. What Christmas is all about is kindness. That's what stands out. Be kind to those who are mean and cross, the ones you think are gross. I guarantee you'll live to see they're the ones that need it most. So even though my wish for snow is usually ignored, kindness is a gift that everybody can afford. Maybe the message that seems to have missed us, just like a puppy. Kindness isn't just for Christmas. We've all seen so much sadness since this virus came about, but we've also seen the good things, and I'm not left in any doubt. As I sit here and make my wish this year, I'm happy just to know if people are kind, then I won't mind if there isn't any snow. But maybe we'll find we can be kind, and the snow still gets to blow. And then it started snowing in the studio, and I got a mouthful of it. Okay, everybody. Well, listen, we are. This has gone through it so quickly. Um, we've got more nice shout outs. Edward Smith, thank you. For, oh, thank you for the shout out. Pete Matthews is here. Delighted to know you have a dishwasher. You had a washing machine on TV. Thank you, Pete Matthews. That's one of my best friends. Um, <laughs> yeah, just pointing out another mistake that I made in the show, which they also cut, thankfully, on the Rural Variety Show. The, the line was, um, yeah, I didn't know we had a dishwasher. And I said, washing machine. Luckily, that was one of the things they cut because we didn't have enough time. Uh, Suzanne Nixon, if you could perform with anyone, who would it be and why? Um, Frank Sinatra. You didn't say dead or alive. Frank Sinatra. Have to be Sinatra. Or Sammy Davis. Big Sammy Davis Jr. fan. Um, yeah. Uh, thanks, Dan. Dan Du. Very good. Love watching your BGT. Liz Barnes, you missed the Christmas Day special. Oh, so that's the first time you heard the song. That's great. Thanks, Liz. That's why we did it, just in case anybody didn't see it. And Daniel Clark, can you say hi to what my wife, Sammy? We are currently self-isolating after a six-year-old had a positive COVID result. She got on Christmas Day. Oh, Daniel, I'm so sorry, dude. That's really tough. And I hope your six-year-old is okay. Kids do seem to bounce back. We think both our kids had it because um, me and my wife got it as well um, back in November. And uh, oh, my wife says, love you. Thanks, love. I love you too. She's upstairs. <laughs> Funny. Um yeah. So, and, and the kids had it for like a day and then they were fine and we were wiped out for like a week. So, yeah, it's no fun, is it? So and Joe, thanks, Joe Allen. Fantastic show. As long as you're enjoying it. That's my manager. So as long as she likes it, we're all happy. OK. Mm. Right. Listen, we are nearing the end of the show. If you weren't here at the beginning of the show, um, I'm going to do uh, uh, two more songs. Uh I'm going to do my final song for BGT. And then I have a brand new song, which I've written, especially for tonight and for the British Legion, a charity. And we are going to perform it at the end of the show. But we are asking you to make a small donation, whatever you can afford. I know everybody's struggling at the minute, um, but that's why we're here tonight to try and raise some money for this very worthy cause, the Royal British Legion and all the incredible uh, people that they support. So uh, the donation link should be at the bottom of the screen. If Paul's doing his job, uh, <laughs> I'm sure it is. Yes, there it is. Look, brilliant. Um, so, yeah, please, folks, uh, 10p, 20p, 50p a pound, whatever you can afford just make a small donation uh, to the charity um folding money would be even better uh and uh, if we get enough we'll find out how much has been donated and if we get enough i'll do the song i'll probably do it anyway to be fair if you can donate that'd be amazing so uh yeah the finals of britain's got talent i had to come up with a new song um because I'd used my final song in the semi-finals and the judges chose me as the act to go through to the finals which again just mind blowing i got the golden buzzer then i got the judges choice and then i won as far as BGT experiences go, mine was right up there with about as, as, about as good as it can be. Um, but I had to write another song for the finals. And if you're a songwriter and if you're a comedian, you're always trying to perform stuff which people can relate to. You want, you know, if you tell a joke, you want people to go, yes, I know what he means. And if you write a song, you want people to be able to relate to it, for it to touch people. Um, so I felt that I had to sort of acknowledge what had been going on in the world. Um, but it, it was a very delicate situation because so many people have, have been suffering. So, uh, yeah, I decided I'd try and write something optimistic. 
Um, and I had friends, I have friends who have suffered um, not just financially, but mentally. There's a lot of people going through a lot of mental health, health issues because of this, this stupid thing. Uh, and physically as well, a lot of people in, in a lot of pain. So um, I wanted to help people to maybe focus on the small things because it's easy to get overwhelmed by the big things. Um, what What's going to happen? You know, we don't have any, any control over what's going to happen, but we do have control over playing a game of Twister with our kid or something. You know, you know what I mean? It's the small things that we need to focus on that, that can make us happy. So that was the idea of the song. Uh, and it worked out. <laughs> Everybody seemed to like it. There were a lot of votes. And thank you if you vote. I've, I haven't stopped saying thank you since this whole thing happened. Um, and I'm really hoping I'm going to be touring next year. Uh, I'm going to be at Butlins in July and August and then September and October. Almost every night I'm in a theatre up and down the country. Um, social distancing allowing. And I'm really looking forward to meeting you, to seeing everybody, and hopefully we'll be allowed to hug so I can just give you a hug and say thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to tour the country, to do shows like this, to raise money for great charities. Um, it's just a huge privilege and I'm, I'm very humbled by it and I just want to thank you all very much. Okay, let's you over. This is the song that I wrote uh, for the finals. Moments in your life don't get much bigger than this. It's a milestone like a wedding or a teenager's first kiss but to be here for the British Legion is slightly odd it's champagne and caviar I'm used to Vimto and battered cod and though this moment overwhelms me the question must be asked do we sometimes miss the small things as life goes by so fast mosquitoes are only tiny but they can drive you mad so never underestimate Small things that make you glad My wife makes me happy And she'll be there when I call I got undressed and I got stressed When she realized it's just small things Like the last shoes in the sale Being the right size for you A baby's expression when they're having a poo Looking in a junk drawer and finding a pen Fitting a size 8 when you were usually a 10 Small things that make you happy, small things that make you laugh. Bubbles make kids happy when they're trumping in the bath. Aardvarks are happy when it's alphabetical. Dogs will always wag their tails if they can lick their ball games. Make kids happy when they're playing, having fun. I wasn't happy when the schools closed and I had to teach my sons. I was happy when Boris told me I could finally hug my mum. But I was happiest in April finding Lou Roll for my bum. Ant and Deck are happy when they take home an award. So they've been pretty happy since 1994. It's actually 1995, but that didn't rhyme. You've got to seize the moment. You just live once, I hear you say. But that's not true, you die once, but you must live every day Smile as if they've told you there's no need to quarantine When you laugh in denim, happiness is in your jeans I was very proud of that line <laughs> Happiness is small things like being with our friends Little things like when the Queen said we'll meet again On Thursdays on our doorsteps with pride inside our chests Taking just a moment to clap the NHS And it won't be long before these masks are gone We'll be living life again to the maximum And we'll remember people like Sir Captain Tom And in years our kids will be reminiscing Not about the big stuff they've been missing But that every day they got to play with dad and mom and we'll remember that we were strong when mcdonald's was closed for so very long <laughs> but britain's talent will be that we all carried on and britain's talent will be that we all carried on Be here now to get this far For you to make me feel like a star For gratitude, I don't know where to start 
When Alfie asked me, what's it all about? I thought I knew, but I had my doubts. But the answer is so simple and so smart. You'll realize through it all, the moments that you thought were small can take the biggest places in your heart. And if you're lucky, your family plays the biggest part. Whew, there we go. That was that. And that's how I won Britain's Got Talent. Amazing. Right, listen, we are, we, it's been an hour and we've run out of time. I, I've got the new song. Let me just check with Paul. I think we're okay with time. Paul, are we okay? Are we okay for time? Can we do the song? It can be terrible if we can't. I've been bigging it up all this time. Is it okay if we go five minutes over? Hope everyone's all right. Hope nobody's got... A... Oh, we're okay. Paul says we're good. Okay. So, um, once again, thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's been my real pleasure uh, to perform this and to, to help uh, the Royal British Legion. And uh, uh, it was suggested when, when they approached me and asked me to do this show, if I could write a song for the occasion, um, <laughs> because that's what I do now. I write songs. <laughs> and you know what? It, it's, it's, it's Inspiration doesn't always come. You, you just hope. Nobody knows that. You know, I've, I've asked so many creative people where they get inspiration from. And none of us really know. You just hope that it comes when it needs to come. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's just a blank piece of paper for a long time. Um, but this actually came quite quickly. Um, I started writing it yesterday, yesterday, I think. I think I sent a copy of it to my mum when I'd sort of written it. Um, and But I, was, I finished writing it in the early hours this morning. I was up until about two o'clock this morning finishing it. And it's very different to anything I've ever written before. Um, it's not funny. Uh, it, it, it's got, got no jokes in it. There's no punchlines. Um, so I hope you enjoy it. It's called I Wish I'd Asked My Granddad More. And uh, this is in honor of the Royal British Legion. Um, so you've still got time to donate. Uh, and thank you once again for joining us this evening. Have we got any more shout outs I need to do before we go? Edward Smith, what's your favorite song you've written? Uh, blimey, that's a good, I don't know. Um, I, I honestly, I don't know. This this one I'm going to do actually might be the, probably the, whatever the latest song is. I'm, I'm, I do like this one, the one I'm about to sing for. I do like this because it's different to anything I've ever done before. Um, so yeah, so maybe this one. That's a good answer, isn't it? Uh, thanks, George Lunt. I've loved the show tonight. Tori's here. Thank you, Tori. Great show, John. Thank you. Uh, Emis Oroz. Oh, that's a good name. Emis Or Oroz. Or Oroz. Talking about small things. It might be a small thing, but I want you to know that your voice goes further than the UK. I'm actually watching you from Hungary. Oh, amazing. Thank you, Emis. Is that how you pronounce your name? I hope that's how you pronounce it. Hungary. And Susan Nixon, thank you. Brilliant night. Thank you very much. It has been my absolute pleasure. Okay. So this is I'd wish I'd asked my granddad more. Um, and we're going to finish with this. Take care, everybody. And I really hope that I get to see you next year. If you want to find where my tours are, if you go to johncourtney.com, uh, all my tour dates at the moment are on there. We are going to be adding some more dates. Hopefully, we're going to be doing Scotland. If there's anybody from Scotland watching, I'm going to be coming to Scotland. Fingers crossed. I love it in Scotland. And hopefully, some more shows in Ireland. We're trying to get more dates out there. At the moment, a lot of the theatres don't know what they're doing um, because of COVID and stuff. And obviously, there's a lot of shows from this year that are now being pushed over to next year. So uh, we're, we're trying to get theatres as and when they become available. Uh, but for the, at the moment, the dates that are there, September and October, I'm up and down the country. So please check the dates out, book some tickets. And I promise you, uh, at the end of the show, I will wait at the end of the show until I've spoken to as many people as want to stop and say hello. I will wait there until the theatre kicks us out just to say hello. That's that's what I want to do. So um, thank you all very much. Take care. Um, Merry Christmas. Happy New and a healthy new year. And be kind. That's it. Simple. <laughs> He was a soldier, he went to war, sometimes asked what he was fighting for, but he'd tell me stories and I'd sit in thrall. I wish I'd asked him more. He married true love at 18, for three years their love went unseen, though battle scarred, true love endured. I wish I'd asked him more. Stories of sixpences and shillings, front doors unlocked and neighbors willing. The history you lived, the people you know Tell me stories before you go I know that you don't want to talk About the violence and death you saw But your life will always be more Than the blitz of Hitler's war 
I've read of Christmases and trenches, of football games and sharing lunches, but every lesson learned should teach us why gunfire was heard on beaches. I wish that we'd sat down before, I could have asked you more. In your drawer at your bedside are the medals and ribbons there just beside, the poppy and the pin that you wear with pride for the legion by your side. Now your great-grandchildren are here, I tell them tales of the brigadier, who for victory stood and faced his fear, and the legion he held dear. Tell me of the years you shared with grandma as the perfect pair, the devoted love and years of care, those final months when she was scared. When you held her hand and let her talk, often making no sense at all, but you were there and at nightfall, you held her when she called. I wish that we'd sat down before, I would have asked you more. Stories of sixpences and shillings, front doors unlocked and neighbors willing, the history you lived, the people you know, tell me stories before you go. You're the reason why my mum made me the man I would become when my life had just begun, because of you I'd won. As a parent now I hope to be the inspiration you were to me. We're all a part of history. I love our memories. The jokes you tell me when you came round. I wish I wrote that laughter down. I'd see mums look as if you'd done wrong, but still I laughed along. The wink you'd share when you caught my eye. The hugs you gave when you saw me cry. Late at night, the lullabies I never thought about goodbye. When you were older, I'd rush to see you standing there beside the street. Outside the shops in cold November, the words writ large we will remember. I'd feel so proud to see you there, the smartest British legionnaire. Speaking of your lost comrades for your tomorrow. We gave our today. So children, listen, if you can see the slightest opportunity to sit upon your granddad's knee and listen to stories. Grasp every moment that you can. I guarantee granddad or grand will have so many tales in store. I wish I'd asked mine more. Was a soldier, he went to war, sometimes asked what he was fighting for. But he'd tell me stories and I'd sit in thrall. I wish I asked him more. I wish I'd asked him more. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. Lots of love. Good night. God bless. Hope to see you next year. Mwah. <laughs> Thanks. George Lunt, the sun is so...